the entrance antiphon. I am the salvation of the people, says the Lord. Should they cry to me in any distress, I will hear them, and I will be their Lord forever. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law, upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything, and a time for everything under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot the plant, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to be far from embraces, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. What advantage has the worker from his toil? I have considered the task that God has appointed for the sons of men to be busied about. He has made everything appropriate to its time and has put the timeless into their hearts. Without man's ever discovering from the beginning to end the work which God has done. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the Lord my rock. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, my mercy and my fortress, my stronghold, my deliverer, my shield in whom I trust. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Lord, what is man that you notice him, the son of man that you take thought of him? Man is like a breath, his days like a passing shadow. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Son of Man came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Once when Jesus was, playing in, was praying in solitude, and his disciples were with him, he asked them, 
Who do the crowds say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others, one of the ancient prophets has arisen. Then he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Peter said in reply, the Christ of God. He rebuked them and directed them not to tell this to anyone. He said, the son of man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So this first reading is comforting in the sense that it it begs for balance in our life. Uh, There's a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot the plant, a time to kill, a time to heal, There's a time for everything. And what is it doing? Well, in the wisdom of God, it's it's bringing us to the center rather than to remain at the extremes. So a lot of times I think our culture will say, you always have to be happy. You always have to have fun. You always have to be entertained. But according to the word of God, this isn't true. There's a time to be happy, and there's a time to be sad. And there's a time to be joyful, and there's a time to be sorrowful. There's a time to be entertained, and there's a time to be bored and wanting. There is no one answer for our happiness, for our fulfillment. If only I just got whatever I wanted whenever I wanted. If only I was just happy all the time or I could um, be on the iPad all the time or go to bed when I wanted or, you know, sometimes we struggle with these things in our mind, but there's a time for everything and those things can't make us happy. Even if we were happy all the time, we wouldn't be complete. We would be unfulfilled. That kind of seems like a, a contradiction, but it's not. There is one answer for our fulfillment and our happiness, but it's a person. It's not even our moms and dads. It's not even children. It's not our spouses. It's only God himself, a God who gives us both the cross and the resurrection. He gives us both pain and comfort. He lets the sun rise and set on the good and the evil. He lets the rain fall on the good and the evil. So brothers and sisters, we're gonna experience in our life really amazing, awesome things that bring us joy and happiness. We're gonna have times to laugh and have a great time, but there's gonna be things in our life that are gonna be painful, that are gonna be difficult, that are gonna be sorrowful, and that's okay. It's what it means to be a human being. So brothers and sisters, don't ever just take one answer for your complete happiness. There's only one answer, that's Jesus. That's what he asked today. Who do you say that I am? And every person who will ever exist will have to answer this question. Who do you say that Jesus is? A good way to answer that question is, well, how do I treat him in my life? If he is the Christ, the Son of, the God, Son of God, if he is my Savior, do I really treat him that way? Or do I just kind of ignore him? If he is the king of kings, the Lord of the universe, do I treat him that way? Or do I just kind of treat him like anybody or an imaginary friend? We're all called to answer this question, who do you say that I am? Jesus asks us individually. He himself was born, he himself died. He himself had many great uh, times of uh, happiness and joy and at many times of great sorrow. So even he didn't live in the extremes, but lived according to the will of the Father as the Father gave him his providential role in salvation. (laughs) 
Let us stand, brothers and sisters, to offer our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. For the church that throughout her good news, throughout the good news of God's love may be proclaimed to the poor and all the needy, we pray to the Lord. That God's bounteous kindness will transform the hearts and minds of those who govern and legislate, that the dignity of human life will be protected in our laws. We pray to the Lord. For the conversion of all those whose lives are dominated by envy, violence, and hatred, we pray to the Lord. For the grace this week to live with deeper gratitude for the Lord's goodness to us and to be free of malice, discouragement, and bitterness, we pray to the Lord. For our own individual special intentions and concerns that we now hold in the silence of our hearts and place upon this altar of sacrifice. And for all those who have died, that the gates of heaven will open and they see God face to face. We pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, you are truly the giver of all good gifts. We, your beloved sons and daughters, offer our prayers to you in confidence, where we offer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, to be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Communion Antiphon. I am the Good Shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep, and mine know me. In solidarity with our brothers and sisters who are unable to receive the Eucharist today, we offer our prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass has ended. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>